How's it going guys? My name is James and in this video I want to talk about why Japanese cars are so ugly. One thing that Japan is extremely famous for is their car production. They've made some of the world's best cars, but for anyone that's been to Japan, they might have been surprised by the cars that are here. Um, and in this video, I want to talk about why everyone in Japan drives such ugly cars when there's so many options to choose from. As you can see, it's basically a box. It's got really weird styling. The actual engine and everything is very small. The hood is about a hand and a half long. The front is about three inches from the wheel. Um, it is ridiculously tall. I'm 195 centimeters and I'm going to use my body for you guys. This would be about five foot, 10 inches. And then I'll cut this. And then it's about one and a half of me. And then this way from my feet to my belly button. The reason why it is so narrow and so short is because of taxes. Japanese consumers pay about 30% less in consumer taxes when they drive one of these. And so the reason why they're shaped like a box is so that they can maximize on that tax regulation. It's the same reason why in America you see people in, in Tesla Model X's and G-Wagons is because they save on taxes. This is how you save to, on tax in Japan. Japan is obviously a small island country. In addition to being small, 91% of the population lives in urban areas and in order to reduce traffic there, they incentivize using small cars like this. In addition to the restrictions on dimensions, there is also some extremely strict restrictions on the size of the engine. Um, originally they were basically cars with a motorcycle engine in them. Now they have an upper limit of 62 horsepower, which is less than half that of a Toyota Prius. As you would expect with an engine like this, this has a zero to 60 time of three to five business days. And this happens to be one of the newer, nicer, slightly faster versions. It makes sense that they would maximize the length and the width because obviously that is for comfort. However, it does not quite make sense why they felt the need to maximize on height as I'm six foot five and when I'm sitting down, if you can look, I have this much headroom. Um, I've ridden around in plenty of cars in the States and I never have that much headroom. I don't think there are many people that are taller than me here. Not only hurts the looks of the car, but it also affects the drag, reduces fuel economy, reduces acceleration and everything when you're limited to only having 60 two wheel horsepower. Another thing that you'll have to deal with um, and hurts the comfort of the car is the tiny wheels. Um, it is extremely bumpy. Anytime you hit a bump, this is your shock absorber for your head. Um, so your back is just goo, 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 goo. To compensate for that, people have to buy extra cushions so they don't break their backs when they hit a pothole. Yes, I have enough space here. Um, however, these are not designed for tall people. So after a long time, of sitting like this, it's not comfortable. They're designed for small people. So if you are a bigger person and need to take longer commutes, I recommend staying away from these cars. I wanna show you the trunk. Try opening this up in a crowded parking lot. There is no space at all for suitcases. When we moved here, we had to ship our suitcases from the airport to our house because we were not able to fit them in the car while driving, which is not something that you're used to, especially coming from America where everybody has SUVs or larger sedans that can at least fit a suitcase. You also have a TV. Distracted driving is completely legal here unless it involves a cell phone. We're driving right now to go to the hair salon. My wife recently dyed her hair brown and today she's getting it cut. She's also getting it dyed back to black. Say goodbye everyone to brown hair Manami. Bye. Okay, so we made it back from the salon, but it is quite a bit later. There she is with her black hair again. And yes, I do have my Japanese driver's license. I have not driven yet. I want to do that once I get my own car. If you want to see me drive for the first time here, then subscribe to the channel because that is coming. You can just enjoy this B-roll of us driving down the road. And of course the train comes. Finally, that was a little bit of a wait. We're headed to a nice spot. Because the windshield is so tall and the whole car is so tall, pretty hilarious is these sun visors. In order to actually block the sunlight at the level of people, they have to be massive. Look at how long those are. And then the mirror is at the very bottom because that's the level that people are. The windshield could perfectly be here. And most people have this much headroom. One, two, 
three, four big American hands before they get even close to the ceiling. To explain Japanese tax laws, it's basically like wrestling. You have the heavyweight, you have the middle class, and then you have the, the lightweight. So the people in heavyweight, they're gonna be paying heavyweight taxes. The people in the lightweight are gonna be paying more lightweight taxes. But there are also some other benefits to having a smaller car here in Japan. With the streets being so narrow, there's a lot of roads that only allow these cars. So if you have one of these, then you have to park and you have to find a way to walk or um, find another way to get to your destination. Also on narrow neighborhood streets, there is room for these cars. However, it's a lot more difficult. Two of these cars might be able to fit. If you're in one of the larger vehicles, you're gonna have to back up and let the other person go by until there's enough space or a break in traffic where you can actually use the entire road. But there are places in Japan where you can only access with a K car like this. Um, so that is one benefit. And of course, because they are smaller, they are gonna get better gas mileage than one of these bigger cars. I wanna further drive home the point of how unnecessary the height is. Um, if you look in the engine bay, Above here, there is absolutely nothing. The engine is tiny, it's just sitting right here. So all of this is just air. There is no reason why this car can't be this short um, and then also be cut off about right here. All of this is just to be tall for absolutely no reason. I graduated with a degree of, in marketing and I might not be the smartest person, but I do remember taking a class in consumer behavior. Because there are limitations on size, they compromised on a few things to make the interior space more comfortable. But then they realized people aren't actually sitting in all these cars and they don't actually know which one is the most comfortable. They're just looking at the number, okay, which car can I get in this class that has the most amount of interior space? They didn't have a way to measure which car has the most usable interior space. Instead, they just look at the number, okay, this one has five cubic meters or eight cubic meters, one, and then they'd pick the one with the highest rather than actually sitting in it and seeing, okay, what's actually needed. They would just say, okay, which one maximizes my interior space while still gives me the cheaper tax option. That would be one of the biggest factors in their buying decisions. Every single car company is in business to make money. And so if this is what people are buying, they're gonna make the one with the most interior space regardless of where that interior space is, even if it is completely useless and subtracts from the experience and the design of the car. Basically, these tax laws influenced consumer behavior, which influenced car companies to evolve the majority of cars in Japan to something like this. Cars like this one and this one do not meet US safety restrictions because you can see door panels are very, very thin. You get in the car or you shake the car, the whole car shake. If you have seen many car reviews, you likely have seen videos from this mm -hmm. guy, Doug DeMuro, who does awesome reviews. He reviewed an older van in this class where the engine was actually not in front. It was moved back to underneath the seats. So it would allow for even more space in the back of the van. He said it perfectly when he said, you are the crumple zone. If anything were to happen right here, it would go straight to the passengers. And that is why they are not and should not be allowed on US roads. One reason why the government promotes them so much is because they do make it safer for everyone else on the road. So if everyone is driving one of these, it's safer than having half the people driving these and half of them driving big trucks because that puts these people at a much higher risk. If this car right here were to get in an accident at US highway speeds or um, with a larger American sized truck, it would not be good news for the people inside. That is all I'm gonna say. Also about design, this, this color combo makes a lot more sense. In America, you have a lot of cars with a black roof because they look cool. Um, it, it shows the lines of the car better. People don't like black cars because they get hot and most of the heat comes from the roof. And people don't like white cars because they tend to look dirty. But I always thought it was funny when in America, you, some, you sometimes see Range Rovers or sometimes cars with a white car with a black roof, which I think is kind of the worst of both worlds when it comes to practicality. You have the heat coming from the sun that's just baking the cabin inside, and then you have to still deal with the dirt around the wheels where it gets the most dirty. Um, but this one seems to make a little bit more sense where you get the benefit of heat being reflected off the roof and then also having a little bit of color so when it does get a little bit dirty, um, it doesn't show as much. So that is one thing that I do like about this specific car. Which by the way, this car is a Suzuki Spatia if you wanna look it up. Here is their website. They mark it as a, as a family car and they show a family with two kids because 
you can only have two kids if you have this car. If you like this video, you may want to consider subscribing because there is a lot of car content coming your way. And just like that, the sun is setting and now me and Manami are going to go drive off into the sunset in our beautiful Suzuki Spacia. Hope you enjoyed, we'll see you later.